coming up on this edition of Access Virginia Beach. Hurricane season is here. We'll make sure you're prepared. And for the first time in decades, the Blue Angels soar over the oceanfront. We'll take you there. Plus, get in shape just in time for summer. Find out how the recreation centers can help you out. That and more are coming up as we access Virginia Beach. Hello, and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach, a program that informs you of news and events from around our city and schools. I'm Georgine Jones. Thanks for joining us. June 1st marked the start of the 2012 hurricane season, and thankfully, forecasters are predicting a relatively tame season. Well, this season is supposed to be a little bit below normal, um, but again, our concern is one storm is our concern, so whether there's a lot of storms or one storms, you have to be vigilant during the hurricane season for the potential storms to impact Virginia Beach. Forecasters are calculating 12 named storms for this season, with seven of those possibly developing into hurricanes, a much better forecast than years past. But that doesn't mean citizens should put down their guard. All it takes is one storm to make our lives miserable. That's why it's so important to be prepared before the storm hits. Well, we have uh, uh, a unique vulnerability in terms of hurricanes. Uh, we don't get hit very frequently, but if a big one comes, we're so much uh, impacted in terms of the density of our population, the limited roads out of here, the consequences of that storm, so we have to be very leery of that. Creating an emergency supply kit before a storm hits is also a must. Essentials include food that won't spoil, plenty of water, a battery-operated radio with extra batteries, flashlights, and a first aid kit. Before and during the storm, it's important to stay tuned to local weather reports and be prepared to take action. Log on to vbgov.com slash be prepared for more emergency preparedness information. Hampton Roads is home to the largest military bases in the nation, so it's only fitting that every year Virginia Beach hosts the Patriotic Festival, a special celebration to honor our service men and women. And this year's festival featured some high-flying action. For the first time in decades, the Blue Angel Jet Squadron soared over the Virginia Beach oceanfront. The air show was part of the city's patriotic festival and was also part of Opsail 2012, a national maritime event celebrating the bicentennial of the War of 1812 and the riding of the Star Spangled Banner. I'm pretty excited about seeing the Blue Angels and everything and my dad used to take me to air shows when I was little myself, so this brings back some you know, good childhood memories for me. The aerial acrobatics drew thousands of visitors to the beach, including CJ, who was here with his dad for the very special day. We're from Richmond, came down here today for CJ's ninth birthday. I'm really excited to see the Blue Angels and the F-22. And CJ is not the only one thrilled about the performance. Pat and Tony from Massachusetts made a return visit to the beach just to check out the action. Our B&B &B place that we stayed last year sent us an email saying they're here and we said we'll be there. So we booked our uh, room right then and there. And they weren't let down. The Blue Angels stole the show with their daring aerial tricks. Highlights from the performance also included the stunts from the Geico Sky Typers, the F-A-18 Super Hornets, and even a dramatic rescue from the United States Coast Guard's search and rescue team. Opsail 2012 also included concerts, ship tours, a parade of sails, educational opportunities, and much more. Events were located throughout Hampton Roads. Well, beach season is officially here, and if you're trying to get your body bathing suit ready, then the Parks and Recreation Department might have just the thing for you. There are six recreation centers located throughout the city, and each one has an indoor swimming pool, gym, fitness area, and much more. And now, starting July 1st, they are offering new membership options that are easier to understand, convenient, and affordable. 
adult Virginia Beach residents can sign up for an annual membership for the low price of $81. But if you want more flexibility, you can enroll in a month-to-month -month membership using your credit or debit card for only $11 a month. To end your membership, just give them 30 days notice. Seniors are $65 a year and a youth membership is only $32 a year. These new rates only take effect starting July 1st. Membership allows you access to all Beach Rec Centers and of course there's no joining fee ever. Virginia Beach Parks and Recreation offers more than just a place to work out. Whether it's to fish, barbecue, or just relax, there are 249 parks located around the city for families to enjoy year-round. And all those parks recently got some national attention. The Trust for Public Land Park score ranked our park system seventh among the 40 largest U.S. cities. Ratings were based on park accessibility, size, and services investment. Virginia Beach led all cities on the playground measurement with five playgrounds per 10,000 residents, more than double the city average. And if you're wondering who took home the top honors, that went to San Francisco, California. And while the city was celebrating their good news, the school division announced their own accolades. Ten Virginia Beach high schools have earned some bragging rights. They have been ranked among the nation's best. The Washington Post just released its list of the top 1,900 public high schools in the nation, and several beach schools made the cut. Princess Anne High School was given the highest rank in the division, at 213th in the nation. Rankings are based on a ratio of advanced placement and international baccalaureate tests taken compared to the number of graduates. All 10 of those beach high schools listed rank among the top 9% in the nation. Coming up next on this edition of Access Virginia Beach, we'll give you a look inside the school division's newest elementary school. Plus, caps and gowns are once again in fashion as the class of 2012 gears up for graduation. We'll have that and more when we return. Step back in time and learn the story of determined individuals who wanted more for their children. The Union Kempsville Museum tells the story of the first and only high school for African American children in segregated Princess Anne County. Located at the Renaissance Academy in Virginia Beach, the museum contains artifacts from the school's history like old photographs, athletic equipment, and prom queen crowns. Interactive features keep the stories of triumph alive. The school may be closed, but the legacy lives on. Come visit the Union Kempsville Museum, a story for all people. They are the largest volunteer-based group of its kind in the country. They respond to over 40,000 calls a year. They have saved countless lives. We're talking about Virginia Beach's Volunteer Emergency Medical Services, and they're looking for you to join the ranks. From medical emergencies to life-saving interventions, EMS volunteers are state-certified, highly trained, and ready to respond around the clock. Training classes are held regularly and are tuition free. So if you're ready to make a difference and can commit 48 hours a month, then volunteer for Virginia Beach EMS. Welcome back to Access Virginia Beach. I'm Georgine Jones. The original College Park School was dedicated back in 1973. Now almost 40 years later, school officials, students, and community members gathered to celebrate another new beginning. I believe the children are future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. And there's no better place to teach those children than right here at the new College Park Elementary School. Today, College Park Elementary students, faculty, parents are enjoying a very beautiful, spacious environment, including state-of-the-art classrooms and new athletic facilities. And this is something that our students should have. College Park is the newest elementary school in the division, and it opened up last September. Today, the community gathered to dedicate this unique school. We are the best in the and this building doesn't get any greener. 
It is LEED certified and features a zero runoff site, a green roof, a wet lane rain garden, LED lighting, solar collectors, and more. We collect all the rainwater off the roof of this building. We use it to flush all the toilets in the building. If you look at a large building like Renaissance Academy, that saves us a little over a million gallons of water a year. The $22 million building is home to almost 400 students and features smart boards in every classroom. College Park is located in the Kempsville area and is the 23rd elementary school modernized or replaced since 1998. Graduation season is once again creeping up on us. In fact, Academy students at First Colonial got a jump start on those graduation celebrations. I know that I speak for all of your Academy teachers when I say that we're proud of each and every member of the class of 2012. Students from the Legal Studies Academy celebrated their senior projects and the success of the Academy during Law Day. It's a great, great event for all of us. It's the pinnacle of all the work that we put in to the Academy. Attorney General Ken Cuccinelli addressed students during the celebration. The program also included a recognition ceremony for the Academy's class of 2012 and underclassmen who have earned academic honors. Aaron Babb. 79 seniors graduated from the program and many of those students are ready for the next step. I plan on going to George Mason. Uh, my future plans is to go into criminology. Um, I think the having a class in criminology, which was offered in no other school other than, um, you know, the Legal Studies Academy, having a full-fledged class for that, you know, really taught me that, you know, you can find interest in anything. It's just been such a learning experience, you know, learning how to talk in front of groups because I would never have been able to do that before. And then getting out the connections and getting to grow as a group. The Legal Studies Academy is for students who have an interest about the law or legal issues. Specialized courses prepare them for eventual jobs in the law field. Now that students from the Legal Studies Academy got some practice walking across the stage, it's time for the rest of the class of 2012 to receive their hard-earned diplomas. All Virginia Beach high schools will take their turn on stage at the Convention Center beginning June 13th through the 16th. As in years past, VBTV will cover each graduation and replay the event on Cablecast. Additionally, each graduation will be broadcast live on the internet courtesy of TroopTube. This service provides a link to the ceremony for parents, grandparents, and other friends unable to attend the event. Those wishing to order a DVD copy of the ceremony can do so by going online to vbgov.com forward slash vbtv or sending a $20 check to the address listed on your screen. VBTV will rebroadcast each ceremony during the end of June, beginning of July. And if you would like to congratulate a member of the class of 2012, vbschools.com is now offering VB Grad Wall. VB Grad Wall offers you a chance to post your best wishes to graduating seniors. The service can be accessed through the school division's website and will be available now through July 30th. Each Beach High School will have its own wall. Simply log on to vbschools.com and click on the Class of 2012 icon. Coming up next on this edition of Access Virginia Beach. The city is going green. Hundreds gather to help reduce our carbon footprint. And it's a robot invasion. Beach students show off their engineering talents in a robotic challenge. Don't go away. We'll be right back. What'll it be, kids? I want to munch on a massive mystery. No! An ooey, gooey, chewy comedy. Please? Can we get an appetizer of short story sticks? Why not share a large pizza book with everything? Sounds great! This summer, kids, teens, and adults can read your favorite flavor of books, play games, win prizes, and more, all at your local public library. Reading is so delicious! I'll have what they're having. Back. 
Welcome back to Access Virginia Beach. I'm Georgine Jones. Energy conservation, waste management, reducing your carbon footprint, and sustainable living were just a few of the environmental lessons learned at Amerigroup's EcoFair. At Amerigroup, uh, we strive to be a different kind of health insurance company, a company that does well. And striving to keep its workforce thinking green, hundreds of Amerigroup employees stationed across Hampton Roads gathered at their National Support Center in Virginia Beach for the third annual affair. The sustainability is not, a, uh, it's not just about energy management practices and operations and things like that. It's about a way of life. It's about creating a better future for our, our um, future generations. If we don't do that, what does the world look like? Amerigroup has been a partner with the city in its efforts to inform citizens about ways to conserve resources. Uh, the city of Virginia Beach is extremely fortunate that the corporate community, companies like Amerigroup, really understand not only the benefit of establishing jobs and creating a presence in the community, but also understanding that there is stewardship in, in supporting sustainability as a practice. Yeah, it's got little wildflowers in it. So yeah. City departments handed out environmental stewardship information and informed guests of ecological tactics the city undertakes to preserve the environment. This is a good way to showcase what we have in Virginia Beach when we have companies like Amerigroup, but also so many other people from the city participating in different organizations. It's a win-win for everybody. Amerigroup stresses to employees that they cannot be a good business in the city without being a good member of the community. Ideally what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a green day for all of Amerigroup so all of our health plans together are participating in some sort of a, a national green day activity. If the historic African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, is true, then a special group of mentors at Bayside's Middle School are certainly doing their part. Hey Desmond. How are you buddy? Good. Good. Mm, so good to see you. Mentoring so has allowed me to interact with the students in a different atmosphere than just the classroom. We've taken field trips, we've done activities. Today we're gonna to have a kickball game and a cookout. And you get to be more of yes. not that so really tight-lipped teacher, I'm not here. strict. Okay? You get to go I and have fun and be yourself and allow the kids to get in to your heart a little okay. more. Mentors and the services they offer students provide guidance and help them get a better grip on daily activities, which may be causing issues. At this point in the year, my mentor and Mr. Lands and the whole program has helped me bring my grades up a number of times and when they have slacked and also become more of more physically connected with friends and people around and the community itself. School resource officer John Nicole is Taysom's mentor. He believes the time spent this year with him made a difference in his life. With Taysom, it's it's been up and down but mostly lately, you know, it's been up. Uh, he did start out the year pretty good, and then he started to, f to fall down a little bit, and I was able to encourage him and offer him some tools through the school that maybe he didn't know about or he didn't realize that he could use. And based with, you know, with those tools, he was able to bring his grades back up. Regardless of where you came from or where you've been or the stuff that you've been through. Yes. That you could Constance Williams sponsors the Lady Raiders Club. She believes the all-girls group opens the eyes of young ladies, allowing them the opportunity to get a better grip on who they can become. We try to get them to broaden their horizons, to get to see the other parts of just, you know, being a student and where they can go from there, how to conduct themselves, how to carry themselves, how to goal plan, and mostly just to get to know who they are. In celebration of the end of this year's mentorship program, students and mentors join forces in an invigorating game of kickball. It's an end of the year celebration for the two mentoring programs here, and we have the kids getting together and we're playing a kick, kickball game to celebrate and followed by some food, um, you know, after the kickball game. And if you got a kick out of that story and you would like to join in on the fun, contact your favorite school and find out how you can become a mentor. What did you do in school today? Well, the students in this next story have quite the answer to that question. They built a house. We appreciate y'all coming out today on this uh, kind of uh, not so pretty day. The rain didn't scare everyone away as students, community partners, and school staff 
gather to celebrate a new home built by more than 100 Virginia Beach High School students. Well, this house started two years ago. Um, we just completed it. Uh, we're having the grand ceremony today. We actually broke ground fall of 2010, I believe. Um, we had seven trades that got involved in helping from the ground up. From masonry to landscaping, students from the Technical and Career Education Center helped build this three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bathroom house. Well, I helped uh, the landscaping all around, um, aerating, get, leveling everything out, and then um, putting sod down and putting flowers up and, and then mulching it and stuff like that. It's hands-on and, you know, get the experience and you can learn from it. Funding for this unique learning opportunity was made possible by the Education Foundation and community partners like Stephen Ballard, who donated close to $25,000 worth of products. And it's worth it. You know, it's a good, good thing for a good cause, and uh, anything you can do to keep the youth of America going and the people to teach them and educate them, it's important. Glad to do it. Proceeds from the sale of the house go to the Virginia Beach Education Foundation, which has contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to special projects and teacher grants. It's a very rewarding project for everybody. It helps out the teachers throughout the school system that are very limited with their budgets in class, that are trying to incorporate more fun learning activities in their classrooms, um, and it also is rewarding to the students that participate in this project. The house is located in the Old Beach neighborhood on 23rd and a half street. This is the 15th year the Education Foundation has built homes. And it's because of money raised by the Education Foundation that teachers are able to offer innovative and creative learning programs like this one at Bayside Middle School. And we also completed three civic leader projects in our school, in our community, and in our world. Before their formal board meeting, members from the Education Foundation got to see firsthand the success of two of grant projects they funded. To see the reality of, of what our gifts result in is, is always a great feeling. And it, it gives us a lot of energy to go out and continue what we're doing and to increase the level of, of what we're trying to do. Because when we see, see the kids up there and the smiles on their faces as they're actively engaged in these learning experiences. It's just, it's a great feeling. Students from Bayside Middle School's See Straight program and civic leaders of Today and Tomorrow gave presentations about their learning experiences. This is called the See Straight program. It's supposed to help us get a better life in education, the college. Administrative staff developed the See Straight program to help students who are having trouble adapting. Participants feel lucky to take part in this fun learning opportunity. We're going to the Tides game. Um, light rail, we're going to see Virginia, North State, all those other stuff. Have fun like usual kids do, but still learn stuff that we can do for college. Both projects are funded by the Virginia Beach Education Foundation. To find out more about the organization, log on to vbef.org. Robots invaded center stage at the convention center as the school division hosts the STEM Robotic Challenge. <laughs> 400 students representing 23 beach schools participated in the competition, which is designed to introduce disadvantaged students to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through robotic exploration and development. Today's event is really a celebration of all of these kids working all year long to get ready for this one event. Middle and high school students have long been participants in the program, but this year elementary schools got to show off their robots at the competition. Well, I uh, really like how we compete in it and also that we got to make it from one little like chipboard to the whole robot. Proud moms and dads rooted for their favorite robots and their kids operating the controls. It was amazing. It was absolutely awesome. She competed in the STEM Robotics Club competition. They worked very hard to get here today, and it was very exciting to see her manipulate the robot and the blocks. And at the middle school level, we're not expecting... Before these mechanical wonders can battle in the competition, they must undergo a judging process. Prior to this event, we had preliminary judging, and all of the students that participated 
participated with level one and level two had to submit a portfolio of all of their designs. It had an essay involved. They had to do drawings of their robot. And basically they were trying to set up a, a series of a pattern so that the preliminary judges could look at that and see what their design was for this, for this concept and, and project that they were building. Level one competitors battled each other in the lift and stack attack, while level two contestants participated in a nuclear disaster drill. The bomb squad's finest, courtesy of the Beach Police Department and the United States Navy's Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit, wowed the students and adults hopefully inspiring interest in a future robotic career. And that does sound like a fun job. For more information about the STEM robotics program, contact the Office of Technical and Career Education or visit the website listed on your screen. And with that, we've come to the end of our show. But if you've missed something or would like to see it again, you can view this program online. Log on to bbgov.com media. Then under all the categories buttons, find and click on Access Virginia Beach. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Georgine Jones. Thanks for watching.